Nas and Hip Boy drop some new music, The Tide, and I like it. Here's why. Hey, yo, ease. They consistently find tiny little pockets of their own that don't necessarily sound like their previous work. I love the way Nas keeps discovering lanes to share valuable lessons that we all need to know about at each level. They bite the hand and feed them, your man is low-key competing. Be somebody you help, they got beside itself. Moving like his body's under their belt. Putting problems on you, they couldn't juggle they self. Accountability. Stop blaming everybody else for your problems. They be too faced it. Hit us more loyal than some of these dudes. I used to do tapes where they gotta face it. I understand. As fans, we just want the music. But as an artist, when you're creating, the synergy has to be right. What does that remind you of? I don't work this hard to be around people I don't like. Hip Boy is an elite producer, but now he's an artist who's dropping songs with the best ever. And they're not sitting in the vault. They're consistently releasing them. Esco believes in him. And let's not ignore Hit Boy's beat switch up execution rate. It's phenomenal. Not many producers can do that. All in all, these dudes are just having fun. And it's reminiscent of a team being up by 50 in the fourth quarter and the starters are still in. They doing whatever they want. Go get your gear. Quick question for you. When you was coming in a young, did you know you had a... I don't want to say obligation, but did you know you had to drop gems in Illmatic or did you know like later on, like, you know what, people is listening to hear some some gems from me? I, I wanted to drop gems because the conversations I was having around that time as a very young adult was was that type of conversation. I was mm. talking to a lot of older guys um, and they was putting me on because they saw a light. They got like started to like me and saw a difference and me from a lot of the guys I was hanging around. So a lot of the older dudes will pull me to the side. And I almost could feel that they're going to pull me to the side because I could check them. I see them checking me out while I'm with this crew, and mm -hmm. I see them sizing up everybody. And then after a while, when they got me by myself, they started to talk, and then they realized the stuff I was up on. And my conversation started to be like that, even with my, my crew. Mm -hmm. And we was always trying to look for uh, ways out. Cause you know, there's everybody's rich today, but mm -hmm. back then, yeah, back you know, then said even the rappers was struggling. Drug right. dealers had more money than them left and right. Yeah. So we were still trying to use our mind to figure it out. So when I got into the rap game, and also my influence was was, was like like you said, Kane, but Rakim, and um, there was a, a a bunch of rappers that was coming in or MCs that was coming in with knowledge itself, mm. like the brand Nubians mm -hmm. and. And so now they're starting to talk about black culture and history and stuff. So I'm like, it's blowing my mind, like Tribe Called Quest, S-Clan, along with the books I'm reading. Mm. So when I when I was writing, all of that was like interwoven into the lyrics. It was like, oh, I got it. I mean, it was just natural. It wasn't. Sometimes I was trying to say something like, yo, let me save somebody with this line. Let me mm -hmm. let me help this kid out with this line. And other times, it was just like you said, just it was automatic. It was just, mm -hmm. you wasn't going in as like, like trying to be preachy. It's just, it was kind of automatic, like the type of person I am, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, but, and in that, people thought that I was trying to say I was perfect or mm -hmm. I was catching flack because people thought I was too black or too this or mm -hmm. too that. And I caught a lot of, caught a lot of uh, shit from that because, uh, I remember when I was in a club in Atlanta and I lit up a blunt. This was like 2003, mm -hmm. something like that. I lit up a blunt and I heard these girls kind of scheming on me. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, that's him over there, da, da, da. So I'm doing what, my, what I came to the club to do, have a drink and spark one. They was like, oh, no, he's smoking weed. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I can't believe it. Mm -hmm. And I felt like they thought I was Martin Luther King or somebody. Right, right. <laughs> They have made made their own yeah. image of you and bro. like, oh, you outside of the we can yeah. think you was like Wow bro, oh, so, you like a wee head. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like <laughs> And I'm like, I didn't even realize I'm stinking up the club, you know. Cause and I learned that shit later, like don't go everywhere lighting up because mm -hmm. everybody don't like that shit. Right. And then one time this girl looked at me, I was at an award show backstage, and we just started talking and she said, You know you can't save the world, right? Mm. And I was like, Is that how you look at me? Yeah, mm -hmm. like you're trying to Yeah. You get caught up with that. You're like, damn, they starting to think I'm mm. too much of this. So let me give them a little bit more of that street. Then let me give them a little bit more of this fun shit. Mm -hmm. and you just have to mix it up and make sure it's a whole meal for everybody. Hey, yo, ease.